Hey there, everybody! I'm Forrest, the Renegade Science Teacher, and welcome to our second episode of Scientest! The show where an actual scientist- Hi, that's me, I'm Forrest. Unboxes, tests, and savagely reviews science kits intended for small children. And our second episode is actually already a special one, because a person named Jaden McCaffrey has asked me to review the Pop Bottle Science Kit that they used as a child. So Jaden, this one's for you. And if you have a science kit that you'd like me to test as well, feel free to send it along to this P.O. box right here. You can also send letters or artwork or really anything else you want me to see. Now, I've never seen or even heard of this science kit before, but I'm pretty excited to open it up because it makes some really big promises here on the back. Pure bottled magic. Who knew you could have so much fun and learn so much about science with a pop bottle? Using this ingenious kit, plus common ingredients from around the house, here are 79 fantastic and fun experiments that probe the worlds of chemistry, physics, biology, geology, weather, and even astronomy! Well, that's real freaking neato. What's even more intriguing to me about this kit is that other than the container and the book inside, it only has a measuring cup, four balloons, and a cork in it. So this thing is either an incredibly cool, versatile value, or a hunk of junk, and I don't know which one it's gonna be. The three experiments listed on the front are a pop boat turning the bottle into a power boat, quicksand in a bottle, is this stuff liquid or solid, and then a rainmaker, make your own rainy day in a bottle. I don't know what to make out of any of that. So right away, the interested factor is through the roof. I'm genuinely stoked to get this thing open and try it out. I know this sounds weird, but like, the people who get what I'm talking about will really get it. It smells like that good childhood plastic, you know? Welcome to Pop Bottle Science! Thank you! So the first thing you get out of it is this nice little booklet here, and it is thick, and quality paper, and full color, and it really does look like all of these experiments are pretty well written. I'm just gonna open it up to page one, I don't know what materials I'm gonna need, I don't know what kind of household things I have to go grab, but I just want to get started right from the beginning. Welcome to Pop Bottle Science. Meet your pop bottle. It's a perfect miniature science lab. You can see through it, and it holds things. That's, that's huge. You, most things can't say that. Maybe one or the other, but not both. Experimentation and exploration have been characteristics of mankind since the dawn of time. Man wasn't around at the dawn of time, but I get what they're going for here. Building knowledge through curiosity defines the human species. I like that a lot. Pop bottle science is just the tip of the iceberg. Keep your eyes and mind open, and never stop asking questions. Maybe with something as simple as a pop bottle, you'll be on your way to finding the answers. This is freaking cool! Freaking cool! So right away, this thing is really winning me over. Encouraging kids to continue looking for answers, even outside of this science kit, and to continue doing science experiments, defining science as like a human endeavor. Ah, oh, my heart! So alright, let's just start with like the very first experiment in the chapter entitled Mysterious Molecules. Uh, this one is called Move It. Do water molecules move or do they stay still? Hugely important thing that they're doing here. They're starting with a question. They're not just saying, hey, do this. They're having a question at the beginning so that the kid's mind starts working before they ever actually do the experiment. This type of question-based learning is one of my favorite ways to teach. It is so important, especially with this age group. What do you need? Your pop bottle with the top part removed. Got that. Food coloring and water. Fill your pop bottle about three quarters full with water. Add six or seven drops. Okay, let me go get this full and then we'll come back. So, I got that and I grabbed some food coloring while I was up to. Add six or seven drops of food coloring into your bottle of water. Notice how the coloring falls to the bottom, leaving a trail. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is pretty. That is pretty. Don't touch the bottle. Leave it alone for a few hours. I'm not gonna do that. Check on your bottle. What does the water look like? Water molecules are always moving. The molecules bounce and bump against each other until the color is evenly dispersed throughout the water in the bottle. The process by which molecules exchange places is called diffusion, a phenomenon that occurs in all states of matter. Diffusion in the air, for instance, causes the fragrance of flowers to spread all around a room. Well, that's great! What they're describing here is called kinetic molecular theory. I know this isn't like fancy or dramatic, we just added some food coloring to water, but this is a really tough concept for kids to grasp, and doing something visual like this is a really smart way to open the book. I'm liking this one more and more. 
So let's move on to number three here. It's called Lava Lamp. Why doesn't oil mix with water? What do you need? A pop bottle, vegetable oil, food coloring, and water. Good thing for all of us, I keep giant jugs of vegetable oil around for science reasons. Fill the bottle about one third of the way with vegetable oil. Add a couple of drops of food coloring. Carefully fill the bottle up with water. Slowly rock the bottle back and forth and watch the wave. I can do this better. So what I've done here is I've poured out about two thirds of the water and replaced them with vegetable oil. You know what it looks like if I'm gonna slosh this back and forth. The oil and water are separated, but this book is calling this experiment Lava Lamp. So if we're gonna call it Lava Lamp, let's make it look like a lava lamp. And we can do that with some Alka-Seltzer tablets. Alka-Seltzer is just ground up aspirin mixed in with baking soda and citric acid. Since it's all squished together dry, they don't react. But once it gets wet, the acid and the base will start to react together and they cause a reaction called effervescence, which means it's producing gas bubbles. So rather than just sloshing this around and noticing that the oil and the water don't mix, I'm gonna show you the way that I do this experiment. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. And now look what you get. The gas bubbles are carrying some of the colored water up and down through the oil. So you get an actual neat little lava lamp going on here. This will go for an awfully long time, and whenever you're done with it, you can just dump it out, you can put more Alka-Seltzer in there. This is a much cooler thing than just like sloshing a bottle around, right? What's going on? Water is heavier than oil, which makes water stay on the bottom of the bottle while the oil oozes to the top. That's not untrue. Personally, I think that if we're already talking about molecules here, we should be talking about polar and nonpolar molecules too. Water is a polar molecule, so they stick together like little magnets, whereas oil is nonpolar, so those molecules can't mesh with the water very easily. If you wanted to throw in a really cool vocab word, you can even use the word emulsification. If you throw in an emulsifier, it helps those two different kind of molecules mix together. This kit says it's for ages 8 through 12. They could get some of that. Looking forward at the next few experiments, they really are hammering home like how molecules work. They have a bunch of them over density. Here they've got one where you let the water freeze and see how it increases in size. And they talk about how matter undergoes a molecular change when it passes from one state to another. This change is in the density of its molecules and temperature can make that change happen. And then on the very next page, they talk about floating an ice cube in the oil. So that way little droplets will drip down as it melts over the course of the day because it's going from a less dense state so it floats to a more dense state. So it's in. this is really good stuff. All right, we only have a certain amount of time here. So let's move on to the next chapter called pushes and pulls. Card trick. Can you turn a bottle full of water upside down and not spill a drop? What you need, a sturdy one liter plastic bottle. I don't know if this one's gonna work. And then water, a sink, and a playing card. I like how they include that you're gonna need a sink. Okay, so I think I know where they're going with this. What I got is a little bottle of water here and I brought a big metal mixing bowl and I don't have any playing cards laying around, but I have index cards because I'm a freaking nerd. So we got one of those. Fill the bottle to the very top with water. The water should come right to the edge of the mouth of the bottle. Hold the bottle over the sink and place a playing card over the top of the mouth of the bottle. Hold the card firmly in place and turn the bottle upside down. So we'll open up our little water bottle here. Bonus water! Now, on goes our not a playing card, just like that. And... And if all goes well, then... It doesn't work! So the problem here is that this bottle is really squishy and they specified you need a sturdy bottle. So I don't really know if I have anything laying around that could do this experiment. But the principle here is the idea of air pressure. There's gravity pushing down on the water inside, but there's also air pressure all around the room that's pushing up on the card. And in this instance, gravity is pushing down less than the air pressure is pushing up. So the bottle will hold the playing card right there unless you do what I'm doing here and squeezing the bottle a little bit accidentally or moving the card at all or like just tilting the bottle. There's a million things that could disrupt the fine little balance there. So like this bottle just being a little flexible doesn't cut it. Cool concept though, and they explain it pretty well here. I'm not gonna count this as a point against them. Like I don't have the materials they need, but like clearly this would have worked. But I think I could do this next one here. It's talking about poking a hole in the bottle and that water doesn't come out of the hole until we equalize the air pressure. That would be an even better demonstration anyway. So let me go grab a thumbtack. So this one is pretty cool and it doesn't matter how squishy your bottle is. In fact, it's actually better if you have a squishier bottle. You can take a little bottle like this that you put some water in and poke a little hole in it and see how water kind of trickles out of the hole but really not much. I can even poke another one. Oh god! Over here! And then we have two little holes and water still doesn't come out of any of them. But if we loosen up the cap just a little bit... Oh god! Oh god! 
there, it just starts flowing because now the air pressure is equalized. So air is pushing down on the water on the outside the same way as it is all around the bottle. If we cap it up again, the flow immediately stops because now there's more air pressure outside of the bottle than there could possibly be inside the bottle again. When I was a kid, I actually learned this as a prank. You give somebody a soda or something and you poke holes all around the bottom of the bottle and they won't be able to tell until they open the bottle and it starts leaking out all over them. I also used to teach a similar science lesson to this at libraries across Oklahoma and every single time if I would make this happen, I would just go, it's peeing and kids would lose their minds. So this is another really good little experiment. It's simple, it's clean, it's fun, it's recyclable. I am loving this science kit so far. All right, next up we got Bubble Maker. Why are bubbles always round? Fill a bowl halfway with water. We'll just use the bowl from the last experiment. Add several squirts of dishwashing detergent and a teaspoon of sugar. Smart using the sugar. I used to use corn syrup. This is way cheaper. Dip the mouth of the bottle into the mixture, lift it up, and blow through the hole. You should get some pretty terrific bubbles. Well, you're making a big promise there, homie, so I hope you can back it up. Pro tip, whenever you make bubble solution, make sure you don't have like a bunch of froth at the top or at least try to like scrape it off before you actually start your experiment because you're gonna have a way better chance of getting a good clean bubble film if you don't have a bunch of foam to contend with at the top. And then we're gonna take the top of our bottle, give it a dip. Yeah, that gives us a good little film. Let's see how it does with bubbles. Aw, uh, it's too rough, too rough. Try it again. Oh, closer. Third time's the charm. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is sick. Another pro tip for you. Bubble solution gets better with age. If you can make it like at least a day in advance and let it just sit overnight, the molecular structure just kind of balances out because of the diffusion we talked about earlier, and you get way, way stronger bubble films. Another cool thing, all the rainbows that you see over the outside of the bubble, those are just differences in like density. So like if it's a little bit thicker in this place, and a little bit thinner in that place, you'll see different rainbow patterns. It's really cool. I could talk about bubbles all day, man. They're awesome teaching tools. Okay, I just ran back to my office and grabbed a glove. This is another really cool thing you can do. Go find like just whatever cheapo, depot, Dollar General, soft cotton glove, as long as it's real soft, it'll work. And then take your bubbles and dip it and try to blow a little guy and watch this. Bounce, bounce, bounce. The glove isn't rough enough to break the surface tension, so it just bounces around. You can play catch with the bubble this way, it's really fun to do. Come back. Come back. Oh, he died. Well, that's a load of fun. Let's see how the book explains why bubbles are round. A bubble is a drop of water with air in the middle. Air inside the bubble pushes outward in all directions against the watery skin. At the same time, the watery skin is pushing inward against the air. Water molecules are attracted to each other, and if water had its way, the bubble would collapse into a water drop. These equal forces of pushing out and pushing in create a shape with boundaries at an equal distance from the center. This shape is a sphere, the only shape that a bubble can be. I love this book! That is expertly written. An eight-year-old could totally understand that. A 12-year-old could totally understand that. It's not too complicated. It's not too simple. This is phenomenal. And the next experiment is one of my favorite physics demonstrations ever because it blows everybody's mind. I'm gonna need two more bottles. Hold on, I'll be right back. Man, we're really lucky that I've got like a bunch of water bottles laying around. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna need one of these water bottles to only be half full. So let me empty one of these out a little bit. Take both bottles and hold them equally high off the ground. Position your pal so that he or she can see the bottles hit the ground. You want to be my pal? Drop both bottles at the same time, being careful not to hit your friends. Here we go! Boom! An object's weight has no effect on how fast it falls. The speed of a fall may be affected by an object's shape due to the surface area. That's why a pin falls faster than a feather. But your two bottles have the same surface area and should hit the ground at the exact same time. This is an awesome principle of physics that Galileo figured out way back in like the 17th century, and it still blows everybody's minds to this day. In fact, when we first went to the moon, astronauts tested this out. They dropped a feather and a hammer at the exact same time, and they hit the ground at the exact same time because there was no longer like air resistance to worry about. We have continued to prove this one physics principle over and over and over again. It's awesome. And here in the book, it encourages kids to make predictions, which bottle will hit the ground first. It encourages them to experiment with different amounts of water. Does it make any difference? This is how you teach kids real science. It's not just, hey, here's a cool thing that happens. It's test it out, try different ones, 
make hypotheses, run experiments, do your hypotheses hold water? This is a freaking awesome science kit. The next several experiments go back and dig into air pressure a little bit more. Kind of like when we had like the, the water peeing out of the water bottle. Uh, you make super soakers, you blow up a balloon inside the water bottle, you have that balloon shoot water at other people, uh, and then they do something really cool here, which I need a ping pong ball for. Place the ball inside the top part of your pop bottle and hold it with your finger. Put your lips around the bottle's mouth, purse your lips, and get a nice solid stream of air. Blow into the mouth of the bottle so that your breath passes over the top of the ball. Let go of the ball, but keep blowing, and it should stay in place. Okay, so... Ah, they should make step one, clean the soap off of the bottle that you're about to put your mouth on. How cool is that? You just made one of the major scientific discoveries of all time. The faster air travels, the less pressure it exerts. They're talking about the Bernoulli principle up in here. Oh, this thing's rad. And it goes on to tie that in to airplane wings because you gotta make a real world connection with the science that you're teaching. And this kit is phenomenal. Hands down, this is the best kit that I've done in this entire series. It's the second kit that I've done in this entire series. But before we wrap up, let's do at least one more out of the next section, blasts, bang, twists, and other reactions. For this one, I'm gonna need to go grab some baking soda and vinegar, and we're gonna use this cork. I'm gonna make a mess today, tra la 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 la. So as always, I use cleaning vinegar for my science experiments, because it's like 20 times stronger than regular vinegar, and I got a big ass bag of baking soda, because reasons. We'll go ahead and empty this bottle out. Gently pour in some super strong vinegar. Ooh, that's pungent. And then the book wants us to make like a little, a little packet of baking soda out of a paper towel, so we're gonna try that. Man, I should have brought like a spoon or something. That ought to be enough. And now we'll just gently roll this guy up, keep all that baking soda safe, tuck in the edges like a sweet little burrito. All right, now we gotta be quick about this. I've gotta get the baking soda packet in there, then put the cork on, then move this thing so it doesn't destroy my ceiling fan. Go! Get on there! Yes! All right, first mark against this science kit. The cork that they gave us kinda sucks, and, and this doesn't do anything. Um, I can show you a better way to do this. All right, so I quickly reset everything and I ran to the kitchen and found a wine stopper. I don't drink wine. I've had this for like eight years and never used it once. And it finally has a purpose. Here we go. Three, two, go. And it's on there and it's tight. And there we have it. Oh, that's already working better. Oh, <laughs> that worked so well. This is the best science kit. This thing freaking rules! This is exactly what you want when you're a kid! I'm 28 years old and I'm freaking out about this thing! And this thing goes on and on. You take the bottle swimming so that you can see like the water pressure crushing it. You build a compass out of it. You build a terrarium out of it. Like this thing costs less than 20 bucks. I would recommend the heck out of this for anybody who has a kid who's excited about science or who is maybe going to get excited about science or who you want to help get excited about science. Not only does this teach some genuinely fantastic experiments, it actually shows kids critical thinking and and the scientific method. I cannot recommend this one enough. Like I'm actually struggling to come up with like problems against this thing. Th they could have added a ping pong ball. That that wouldn't have been too crazy to ask for and the cork kind of sucked but I might have just gotten a bad cork. This one happens to have a couple of striations along the side that made it not work. Maybe the other corks are better. Uh, throw in a candy bar. I don't know man this thing rocks. So if you've got 20 bucks and a little bit of free time and you want to have an amazing time learning some science with your family, Pop Bottle Science Kit is the way to go. I seriously have not seen a science kit like this since I was a kid. I didn't think they existed anymore. And after that terrible first episode, I really expected all of these to be awful, but this one has blown me away. And these guys are in no way a sponsor. I'm not having any conflict of interest here. As a scientist, as an educator, I recommend this kit. And if any of you guys out there watching have a science kit that you'd also like me to test out, send it to the P.O. box down below. If they're all this good, we're gonna have a great show. 
So thank you so much for watching the surprisingly exciting second episode of Scientest. I'm Forrest, the Renegade Science Teacher. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and all the other stuff you do here on YouTube. Leave some feedback in the comments below if you saw anything that you did or didn't like about this video, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, and never stop learning. Jesus, man.